Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is gas line sizing. So I wanted to go over this video with you uh, just to make sure that we're all sizing gas lines correctly. Say you pull out a standard water heater and you want to replace it with a tankless water heater. Usually you're going to need about four times more gas to that water heater. All right, so you need to make sure that you have that gas line sized properly. As well, if you are running gas lines in a house, you'd have to draw up a gas riser diagram. So in that diagram, you're going to supply what size piping you're going to be installing there. You're going to need to be able to size the gas lines properly. In this example here, we're using Schedule 40 metallic pipe, and we are using the longest length method, which is the more conservative method compared to the branch length method. There's a couple things that we need to know before we get started, and that's that this middle table here where it says schedule 40 metallic pipe there are literally about I think there's 36 sizing charts alright so you need to be able to differentiate between them and at the top you're gonna to have the piping that you're planning on running so in this case it's schedule 40 metallic pipe and then over on the right hand side of each of those charts you're gonna have the gas the inlet pressure the pressure drop and the specific gravity so the gas in this instance is natural gas the inlet pressure is less than 2 psi so this one that we're looking at installing is a low pressure system. Since it's less than 2 PSI, you could have one that is a high pressure one uh, and then regulated down afterwards. But this is low pressure from the meter into the building. In my area, it's about 5 to 7 inch water column uh, that they're running for natural gas. So that is less than 2 PSI. Pressure drop is 0.5 inch water column. And you need to check with your code official just to see what they're enforcing for that area. In this area here, we're looking at 0.5 inch water column for residential, and some, some people might enforce 0.3 inch water column for a commercial. But once again, you just need to check with your local code office just to check to see um, you know, what, what pressure drop they're looking for. The 0.3 inch water column would end up giving you less BTUs for the size and length of the pipe. So for 0.5 inch water column, it's gonna actually be a little bit more BTUs per hour for the size and length of the pipe. And then the specific gravity of the natural gas here is 0.60. All right, the reference chart here that you're looking at is out of the International Fuel Gas Code 2015, and the table is 402.4-2. Just so you know, this chart shouldn't change too much, you know, uh, during the next update. So the 2018 International Fuel Gas Code they usually don't change the charts, they're usually changing updates to the codes that, that don't have to do with the gas line sizing. But it's possible that they could always uh, do that though. There's another thing that you need to know before we get started as well. The capacity in cubic feet per hour that you see on this chart right here, what you need to do is you need to take a look at that and convert that to BTUs because all of your appliances are going to have max inlet BTU per hour. Your water heater could have 45,000 BTUs of input per hour. Your furnace could have 40,000, 80,000, 120,000, you know, anywhere around there, BTUs of input per hour. You want to be able to convert the capacity in cubic feet of gas per hour to BTUs per hour, British Thermal Units of Energy. So what we look at is one cubic foot is actually less than 1,000 BTUs. One cubic foot is actually equal to about 1,020 BTUs, okay, that's roughly. For our purposes, we'll just convert capacity of cubic feet per hour to thousands of BTUs per hour. So the number that we come up with, it says that if we use half inch gas pipe and we have a 10 foot length, we'll be able to supply 172 cubic feet of gas per hour. So we're safe to say that that same half inch at 10 foot will be able to supply 172,000 BTUs of gas per hour. So if we just stick with that 172,000 BTUs per hour, then we're safe. So for our purposes, let's just take any of those numbers, 172, 360, 678 BTUs of gas per hour instead of capacity cubic feet of gas per hour. All right, it's a little simpler when you're doing propane, all right, LP. So that will be liquefied petroleum. Those charts will actually say capacity in thousands of BTUs per hour. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this simple uh, problem right here, and then we're going to look at a more in-depth one. So you have 5 foot plus 45 foot equals 50 foot total. So we're coming in from the point of the delivery in 5 feet into the house, and then we're going to go across the house 45 feet, 
until we reach the appliance, which is 70,000 BTUs max input. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what size gas line we're going to run if it's only going to be one appliance. So we got to find a number that's higher than 70. So if we have 50 foot total and we have 70,000 BTUs, what we're going to first look at is our length. So we're going to come down, down to 50 foot, okay? And then we're going to start looking horizontally to the right. And the first number we look at, we see 72. So that's actually 72 thousands, and it's going to be BTUs per hour. So that number is higher than the actual number we need. So that number would actually work. So now we look up, we come up the chart till we see half inch. All right, so that 50 foot gas line could actually be run in half inch schedule 40 metallic pipe. So now that we solved that one, let's go ahead and move on to a harder one. Okay, so on this one you see that we actually have five appliances. Using the longest length method for gas line sizing, it's a little bit easier uh, than the branch length method because you're always going to use the longest length that you can find on the chart here. So we see that the furthest length possible would be to jog down and come over to that 45,000 BTU appliance. You see I've assigned section letters. So you have section A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. What we're going to do is we're going to take it from section A plus section C plus section E plus section G plus section I. That will get us the 35 foot plus 30 foot plus 30 foot plus 25 foot plus 30 foot. And that's going to equal 150 feet. So we're going to use that 150 feet for every single gas line here. The only thing that's going to change is that we're going to actually use the BTUs that is downstream of that section. For instance, section A is 35 feet, and the only appliance downstream of it is one 45,000 BTU appliance. So we're going to take that length of 150 feet, and we're going to look on the gas line sizing chart, at 150 feet and we find that 40 which is actually 40,000 BTUs is too small so then we move on to the next one 83 so that's 83,000 BTUs and we see that that's three-quarter pipe so that 35 foot section the 20 foot and the 15 foot is going to be made out of three-quarter schedule 40 metallic pipe now B is actually only 15 foot but we're actually going to use 150 foot once again because you got to think about that the gas still has to get all the way down there. It has to get past all the other appliances if they're all running. And it has to get all the way down there. And, and that's quite a bit of friction. So we're actually going to use 150 foot. So we take a look at 150 foot. And we know that 40,000 BTUs won't work again. And 83,000 BTUs will work. And that is actually three-quarter gas line. So we're going to use a three-quarter 15 foot section of schedule 40 pipe. So now we're going to solve section C, which is actually only 30 foot, but we're going to use 150 foot. We're going to add up the appliances that are downstream of it, and there are two appliances one that's 70,000 BTUs and one that's 45,000 BTUs. So that is 115,000 BTUs. So we take 150 feet and we follow it over. 40,000 isn't going to work, 83,000 won't work, 157,000 will work, and that's one inch gas line. Now we're going to solve for section D. Section D, the only thing that's downstream of it is 199,000 BTU appliance. So this is a branch coming off of the main line. We're going to take the 150 feet, we're going to follow it over, 40,000 won't work, 83,000 won't, 157,000 won't, so we're going to end up having to go with the 322,000 BTU. So we're going to end up having to run an inch and a quarter pipe. So an inch and a quarter pipe right there for 10 foot. Now we're going to solve for section E. It's a 30 foot section. We're going to use 150 feet and we're going to add up all the appliances downstream of it. Section E pipe must support at least 45,000, 70,000, and 199,000. So that equals 314,000 BTUs. So we take that 150 foot length and we follow it over to find a number higher than 314,000 BTUs. And that number is 322,000 BTUs. So we're going to use inch and a quarter pipe. Now we're going to solve for section F. So 150 feet, 
40,000 won't work, 83,000 will. So we're going to use three quarter section right there. That's going to be a 10 foot, three quarter inch gas line section. Now we're going to size section G. Section G is only 25 feet. It's going to actually be 150 feet we're sizing it for. Section G pipe must support at least 45,000 BTUs, plus 70,000, plus 199, plus 45,000. That will equal 359,000 BTUs. So we take that 150 feet. We know that 322,000 won't work. We have to step up to 482,000 BTUs. So that means that we could actually add something off of that later. That pipe right there will be able to support over 359,000 BTUs. It will be able to support 482,000 BTUs. So that pipe will be inch and a half. Inch and a half schedule 40 metallic pipe. Now we're going to solve for section H. You see that section H is only 5 feet. We're going to use the 150 feet. And the first number we run into is 40,000 BTUs. So we could choose half inch gas line, but it's going to be at the absolute max. So you could use that. Uh, in my case, I would probably just run 3 quarter inch gas line because it's only 5 feet. It's not a big deal. So we will go ahead and do that. We're going to solve for section I. Now we see that we round it up to get section I's 30 foot, and that's included in our 150 foot section. So we're going to actually use the 150 foot for that. We're going to add up all of the gas lines. Section I pipe must support at least 45,000 plus 70 plus 199 plus 45 plus 40,000. So that's 399,000 BTUs. So once again, in a 150 foot area, if we use 150 feet, we know that 322,000 won't work, we'll use 482,000 BTUs. And that means that we're going to run inch and a half pipe. So that's how you do it. That, and using this longest length method, you stay safer than the branch length method. This longest length method is the most conservative way in order to size piping, and it's probably the easiest way. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.